How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Conversations. My name is Conman167, and today's conversation is all about the upcoming PLE event, Saturday night's main event. And what is old is new once again, as WWE is bringing back this event, and it sounds like it is going to be every single quarter here from WWE, at least throughout 2025. You can never predict the future, how it's going to go. But WWE is set to run a lot of these shows once every single quarter. And it sounds like WWE is also planning on making these shows feel like must-see, especially when you take a look at the card that WWE has put together for this event. But before we get too far into this event itself, what's going to happen this Saturday, and what your bold predictions and thoughts are about the show and what my predictions are on the show I want to go back a little bit right here and I want to go through some of the history of Saturday night's main event because this event started all the way back in 1985 and ran until 1992 and this came at a time when WWE largely presented a star versus enhancement talent matchups meaning most of the matches that you got to watch on a regular basis were mostly squash matches. They weren't like the end-all, be-all. It was a lot of just building up the stars, and you didn't get to see a star versus star matchup. Well, that all changed in 1985 as WWE wanted to find a way to present the stars in a bigger way and make the matches feel a lot more special. And so Saturday night's main event rolled on and it became star versus stars or specialty matches or title defenses. This was the way that WWE basically brought the idea of marquee matchups here on a Saturday night. It's a, it is kind of neat that it also gave birth to the second golden age, you know, when you start to see Hulk Hogan rise up the card when you see uh, Macho Man Randy Savage and, and Andre the Giant and all of that all this happened on Saturday night's main event and without Saturday night's main event I don't know if WWE is what it is today obviously it's an event that has a lot of history and if you take a look at some of the matches that actually happened on the show like we had randy savage versus bret hart in 1987 just an incredible incredible matchup between the two we also had the precursor to wrestlemania 3 with hulk hogan and andre the giant actually taking on each other at this show as well now granted this was known as the main event so it's kind of like a spin-off of Saturday night's main event. I believe this took place on a Friday night. Uh, don't quote me on that, though. I'm, I, I was not born, okay? I, I was not alive for this. I was born in 1995, okay? So I'm just going off of what Google is saying over here. But, like, this was the precursor to the big old bad fight between Andre and Hogan, the body slam heard around the world. We had Heart Foundation versus the Rockers in there. We had the... Uh, the culmination of Virgil and Ted DiBiase with finally Virgil breaking free from Ted DiBiase's evil, evil grips. There's so many big things that happened throughout the years at Saturday night's main event. And with a card like this this Saturday, with Kevin Owens versus Cody Rhodes for the WWE Championship, Liv Morgan versus Io Sky for the Women's World Heavyweight Championship, Gunther versus Damian Priest versus Finn Balor for the World Heavyweight title, Sami Zayn versus Drew McIntyre one-on-one, -on -one, and potentially maybe some other matches that are going to be added. This is a star-studded show. This is like a full-on premium live event. I, I'll go ahead and say it. WWE has found a way to basically put on a marquee show once a quarter without it necessarily taking away from the actual main PLEs WWE plans on running. It's uh, to me, I think that this is genius, and I'm so glad that WWE is bringing it back. But not only are they bringing it back, it sounds like they're bringing back like the old school vibe as well. Jesse the Body Ventura is going to be on commentary, and I can't wait to hear what he's going to have to say on commentary. But then we're also going to have like a throwback arena from the sounds of it. The lighting is going to be old school. The... The setup is going to be old school. It's not going to be like these giant jumbotrons. The, the wrestlers are actually going to enter through the crowd area. To me, man, I think that this could be one of the coolest productions WWE puts on of the year. And I'm excited to see what's going to go down. But I did ask you guys over on Twitter to submit any, any thoughts that you had. Basically bold predictions on the show. And we love to do our Twitter interactions if you have not t been able to find out already on this channel. We love talking to you guys over on Twitter, so make sure you follow me on X or Twitter, whatever you call it these days, at Conman167. But I asked all you guys to submit any bold predictions for Saturday night's main event. 
We're going to talk about it right here on this podcast. And we're starting things off with Phil we met. He says, Randy Orton comes back to cost Kevin Owens the WWE title. This will set up a match between those two at the next Saturday night's main event on July. Whoops, sorry, on January 25th. I got the wrong uh, J month right there. <laughs> but this is... um. I think that this is a pretty good prediction right here. Bringing Randy Orton back at Saturday night's main event and then continuing on with the Randy Orton and Kevin Owens feud going into the new year. Uh, the next Saturday night's main event, that could be a massive match for that one as well. Like, Because you have to have ability to build from one show to the next. Let's say if somebody just watches Saturday night's main event, you need for there to be some sort of uh, continuation, right? The continuity needs to continue on forward. And if WWE has a major angle that runs here at Saturday night's main event, they could follow up on that at the next Saturday night's main event. And it would make a lot of sense for the viewers who are watching just those shows. I like this idea of Randy Orton coming back. I think that Randy Orton is sorely needed back at this point. He has been away for a little bit after being taken out by Kevin Owens with that pile driver. And if they're able to bring him back into this story, it could be a way of allowing Randy Orton to, well, let me let me rephrase that, allowing Cody Rhodes to defend the title thanks to Randy Orton. I, I do wonder how Cody Rhodes is going to get out of this match on Saturday. I wonder if he's going to be able to cleanly beat Kevin Owens again because he's already beaten Kevin Owens fairly clean uh, back at Bash in Berlin, if my memory serves me correctly. He's already beaten him, and if he wants to to move up the card and move away from Kevin Owens, he needs to beat him clean again. And I just don't see that happening yet. Like, I think that the stuff going on with Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and Cody Rhodes is going to continue for a little bit longer, especially considering we don't know what's going on with The Rock at WrestleMania. Like, we, we have no idea if The Rock's even going to be there. And if The Rock's not there, I, I really wonder what Cody Rhodes' WrestleMania match could be. Is it against Randy Orton? Like... You know what I mean? Could it be against Randy Orton? Absolutely, it could be, and it might very well be at this point. So if WWE plans on bringing Randy Orton back into this story, maybe it's a slow burn going into WrestleMania. Maybe eventually Randy Orton believes what Kevin Owens was saying, that Cody Rhodes was not a very good friend all along. But uh, Randy coming back, costing Kevin Owens the title, certainly would give us that ability to build to Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. No issues there. I, I like it. I like the direction. Uh, you know what, man? I'm behind it. I, I'm completely behind this idea of bringing Randy Orton back. I just don't know if he's going to cost him the title or if he's going to have a switch of heart or whatever. But Randy Orton also going against Cody Rhodes is an interesting idea. And if he sides with Kevin Owens, that could make for some great TV. And if they want to do that at the Rumble, if they want to do Cody versus Randy at the Rumble, it would work. How about this, though? Gunther stacks Finn and Damian Priest, Roman Reigns style, and fully gets his confidence back. That is from our shorts editor, Nate, right there. So shout out to our shorts editor, Nate. Um, the idea of Gunther getting his confidence back here at, at Saturday night's main event. I, I Look, I, I think that the idea of Gunther being a, uh, a champion who doesn't necessarily have a lot of confidence right now is the best play for him. It doesn't feel like my ring general, and I don't think it feels like a lot of your guys' ring general either. It doesn't feel like the World Heavyweight Champion that we have gotten to know over the last little while. But I think this is all leading to something bigger for Gunther, and I think it's leading to an eventual John Cena matchup. I think for a little bit, John Cena is watching as Gunther struggles to defend this title, but he just keeps getting by. He's not super confident anymore, but he does keep getting by by defending his title. And eventually John Cena shows up and says, like, I've been I've been seeing how unconfident you are. Like, you're, you're not the same ring general. I'm here to bring that out of you again. You've got all the talent in the world. All you got to do is believe in yourself. But if you can't believe in yourself, then I'm going to become a 17-time world champion. You know what I mean? Something like that. And then that could set up the mania match that we think is going to go down between Gunther and John Cena for the world heavyweight title. I like Gunther's confidence being shot. He has been unbeatable. He has been a beast for so long that it's a different character for him. Granted, it's not the strongest character that he has had. And as a result, people are starting to sour a little bit on Gunther's matches, which, by the way, is insane to me because every time Gunther goes out there, I think he tears the house down. And I think he actually is one of the best wrestlers in the world, period, point blank. Nobody is going to change my mind on that. 
he can do absolutely anything that you need to for a great wrestling match. Like, he is a wrestler's wrestler, man. I, I love Gunther. And I know that he can put on a great match with anybody, right? Like John Cena, if he comes back, him and John Cena are going to put on a barn burner. Now, the only thing is about Gunther is he works better when somebody is willing to take more punishment, right? And if we take a look at some of the matches that has just completely been top tier A plus from Gunther, it's been against other individuals who are willing to take a massive beating. Like I think back to his NXT run, right? NXT UK run, the stuff against Pete Dunn, Tyler Bate, Tommaso Ciampa. Oh goodness me. Like th those were ones that just immediately came to mind. But then on the main roster, we had Drew McIntyre and Sheamus with him. Of course, just Sheamus alone and Gunther, they beat the living hell out of each other. There's so many great matches that you can pick from. And that's just off the top of my head right here with Gunther and it's because of his style in the ring and I think him and John Cena would absolutely crush it at Wrestlemania so him getting his confidence back here Roman Reigns style is a cool idea and I don't think anybody would hate it but I like the idea of him not being super confident going into 2025 because maybe maybe that's just what's going to be his undoing next up here we have Mark Jones saying Drew McIntyre interferes in the Cody and KO match so this is different not Orton. Drew costs Cody the title and moves to SmackDown as part of the transfer window. He feuds with Cody until Cody switches over to Raw via the transfer window. I like where you're going with this. Let me just say this right here, Mark Jones. I, I like the idea and I like the thinking of trying to go with a swerve, something other than what we all think is going to happen. I like that idea. It doesn't make a lot of sense uh, other than Drew McIntyre looking to go after a championship. But even then, with what you have said right here, is that he would feud with Cody until he switches over to Raw. And I just don't know what Drew McIntyre's major issues with Cody Rhodes is other than he teamed with the Bloodline, right? And if we're going down that direction, we're already telling that story with Kevin Owens. And uh, <laughs> I think the story is probably better told by Kevin Owens because they've put a lot of time into it, right? With the, the friendship with Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Cody Rhodes. They, they put time and effort into that. This feels like something Vince McMahon would have done where he just says, all right, screw it. We've got this transfer window. Let's transfer this guy over there. They're going to feud. He's going to cost him the title. And then we're going to transfer the guy back over to Monday Night Raw who lost the title and then... All right, we're done. Like, I just don't think that that is the direction WWE wants to move in. Vince McMahon's booking was very much like last minute. Here you go. Shock factor. Very quick shock factor. Not a lot of thought put into the shock factor. Triple H is a long term burn. It's a slow burn with layers to the story so that when you finally get the big moment at the end or the shock reveal or whatever, it means more. Drew McIntyre switching over to, to Friday Night Smackdown just for the sake of it. it, it Look, he probably will thrive on SmackDown, and he probably probably could go over there, but just to do this, I don't know if that's the right call, man. I I, I think that there's bigger fish to fry for Drew McIntyre on Monday Night Raw right now, or if he switches over to Friday Night SmackDown, it will be to feud with Roman Reigns. I, I'll say it. I'll say it. I think he feuds with Roman Reigns. Uh, through the ropes says Dom comes out and costs Finn the world heavyweight strap. This one doesn't seem to be that bold of a prediction, to be perfectly honest. I think a lot of people are thinking that this is going to happen as well because of Finn Balor basically putting down Dominic Mysterio, saying he didn't deserve the World Heavyweight title shot on Monday Night Raw. That is definitely a seed that Dominic is not going to forget. He is going to remember those words from Finn, and eventually it is going to rear its ugly head. Do I think it happens at Saturday night's main event? It's possible. Absolutely, it's possible. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say we get a tease of it, though. I think Finn Balor accidentally, or I should say this, Dominic Mysterio accidentally costs Finn Balor. I don't think it's going to be on purpose. I think Dominic comes down to the ring at some point, and I think he interjects himself into the match, probably has a moment with Damian Priest, but it is going to be that moment that costs Finn Balor. You know what I mean? Where he's going to be like, why are you out here? I didn't tell you to come on down here. I said, stay in the back or something like that. 
And then F he's just like, I'm just trying to help Finn. I'm just trying to help. And then Gunther beats him at that point. Like, I could see that happening, that exact same scenario, because then Damian Priest is still pissed off that the Judgment Day cost him the match. He's still pissed off at Finn Balor as a result. He's pissed off at Dominic Mysterio as a result. Gunther doesn't win clean, which means that his confidence isn't fully returned yet. And I like that his confidence will continue to be shot moving forward. And then you also get like the whole story between Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio where Finn is going to be blaming him the entire time and Dom's going to be like, I really didn't mean to do it. And then eventually you have him actually screw him over, right? Like eventually, if maybe Finn Balor gets one more one-on-one -on -one shot against Gunther or something like that, then Dominic Mysterio truly costs him the match. I don't know how we're going to get there, but I don't think it actually happens at Saturday night's main event. I just think it's going to be an accident and it's going to cause a lot of story moving forward. But next up, we've got Jeremy Michaels saying that EO wins the women's world title and starts a feud with Rhea going into the Rumble season. Hmm. EO Sky winning the women's world title off of Liv Morgan. It's a cool thought. Uh, it's not going to happen. I, at least I, I can't see a world where EO Sky is walking out of this match as women's world champion. Now, I do get why you're maybe thinking this and why you would like to see it because A, Rhea versus EO at WrestleMania would cook, would be so good. And I really would love to see it as well. And we might still get it, but I don't think that we get the title switching hands at Saturday night's main event. If Rhea Ripley is gonna still go after Liv Morgan. I feel like the ending of that story is Rhea Ripley winning her women's world title back off of Liv Morgan, and maybe it's Io Sky winning the Royal Rumble, and we get Io Sky versus Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania like that. That, to me, is probably the more likely scenario, how we get there, because we've got two friends then facing each other at WrestleMania, and that dynamic might be intriguing. Like, I think that's more likely than seeing EO Sky winning the women's world title at Saturday night's main event. Kevin says John Cena and or The Rock will appear in some way, shape, or form. I feel being on national TV, WWE will want a household name everybody knows to keep the casual viewers tuned in. And this is a very good way to look at this. This guy right here, Kevin, he understands that WWE is going to have a lot of eyes on Saturday night's main event. They are just going to have a lot of people checking it out, wanting to watch it. They might do something like this where either it is The Rock coming back to hype up the next part of his feuds moving forward into WrestleMania season, or John Cena coming back out of the blue to announce his first match back, announce that he is going to be on Monday Night Raw, January, whatever the date is, let me look it up again, January... January 6th, the very first episode of Monday Night Raw on Netflix. He's like, I have a match there. But -da 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 -da. That's not his song. Do, 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 do. That's not his song either. That was Kim Possible. What? what? Oh my God. Why am I playing? Rabuno, do, 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 do. There we go. We got it. Okay. Now the song's in my head. <laughs> Holy crap. That was a moment right there. An elderly moment by your, by your elderly con right here, apparently. But John Cena being on the show. Uh, definitely an interesting idea if he could possibly be there. And I, I would like to see John Cena be on the show. And that, to me, if The Rock is available, obviously you let him show up. You don't deny The Rock being there. You don't say, no, Rock, no, Dwayne, you cannot be on our show. But if The Rock isn't available, John Cena being that special moment on the show where he announces his next match and maybe who it's against, maybe setting up a bit of an angle for it. That could make for some really good TV. And honestly, WWE should probably do it. All right? I'll say it. They should probably do it. That would make a lot of sense. We have uh, Rebellion over here. Rebellion is his name. He says Drew beats Sammy in a five. Whoa, in an under five minute squash match. Coming out of the punk feud, they really need to establish him as a real threat again. I like this. As much as I'm a Sammy fan, and you guys can see that I've got Sammy Zayn in the background with an elf hat on. I love Sami Zayn. Drew McIntyre is obviously big money for WWE, and you're absolutely right. Coming out of the Hell in a Cell match that he lost to CM Punk, losing that feud against Punk, they have to do something to rebuild Drew McIntyre. Him squashing Sami Zayn, while it would hurt my heart, might be the right call. 
that actually makes a lot of sense when you look at it. It's kind of a throwaway match on Saturday night's main event. Sami Zayn losing to Drew McIntyre won't hurt him at all. Sami Zayn will be more than fine. He's got all the fan support in the world behind him. And Drew McIntyre could look like a beast coming out of it. Man, you know what? Rebellion, you talked me into it. I would love to see Drew McIntyre squash Sami Zayn at Saturday night's main event. Book it, Trips. L what's this guy's name? Lou Cotilk. Uh, Lou Lou Cotilk. Lu 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 TIC. There we go. Lu Lu TIC. God, people listening to this thing have got to hate me right now. They said uh, both world titles will change hands. Wow. Finn and Kevin walk out as champion. Are we living in a world where we could leave main event with Finn Balor and Kevin Owens as the champions of WWE? It's not a zero percent chance. It's it's. I don't know if it's 5%, but like it, it's definitely not zero. There's a chance that we could see that. There's definitely a possibility we see Kevin Owens as the WWE Undisputed Champion and Finn Balor as the World Heavyweight Champion. Do I think that WWE will pull the trigger on both champions losing titles in one night? No, probably not. Do I see Gunther losing in a triple threat? No, probably not. Uh, do I see Kevin Owens walking out as champion? There is more of a possibility for Kevin Owens than Finn Balor, in my opinion. Overall, it's, I, I could be behind this. I could be behind seeing the change of champions on, on both brands, but really, truthfully speaking, I feel like Gunther losing the World Heavyweight title is a step back for him. I, I just don't think that that's the right call for him. Not while he is... He's got this like loss of confidence. I don't want to see him be down in the dumps with no confidence and losing his world heavyweight title. At least if he's going to be down in the dumps with no confidence, keep the championship on him, right? So the, the idea of him losing his title, not too intriguing to me, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we got one last one, though. We uh, <laughs> This is a joke. Ian says to Zawa is going to steal money in the bank from Tiffany and cash in on Liv becoming the undisputed nasty champion. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, it, uh, like, look, weirder things have happened in WWE, right? You never know. Maybe Tozawa becomes uh, Miss Money in the Bank somehow, some way. God, man, the internet. Oh, they stay undefeated once again. But guys... Uh, thanks for listening to me ramble on about Saturday night's main event. Now, we got to this point right here in the podcast where I, I am done talking about pro wrestling and I'm about to talk about personal life. I'm talking about the channel moving forward uh, into the rest of the new year. So if you're not a fan of that stuff and you are only here for Saturday night's main event, then I'd completely understand if this isn't for you. But if you like the channel, if you like knowing what's got going on in my life and all that stuff, uh, then this next little five minutes are for you. So... Starting on December 17th, uh, December 17th, next Tuesday, it, it is currently Wednesday when I'm recording this podcast. So next Tuesday, the 17th, it, I will no longer be live for the rest of the year. So there won't be a stream on the 17th, on the 20th, on the 23rd, the 24th, the 27th, the 30th, the 31st. Okay, no live streams for the rest of the year. And it's not because I'm just going away and taking time off for Christmas. I actually have to have surgery and I will be going under on the 17th. I have an inguinal hernia on my left side and I've been dealing with it for about, goodness, uh, four years, four and a half years, man. It's been a while that I've been dealing with it. Maybe it's even going on five years at this point and it just slowly got worse and worse and and now I, I'm, I wasn't expecting to get a surgery date this quick. Like I went into the doctors in September and then had a specialist appointment in November. And then all of a sudden they were like, yeah, in a couple of weeks, you're going to get surgery. I'm like, oh, okay. Not what I was expecting. I was expecting like, you know, them to say like, oh, two years from now, we'll be able to fit you in something like that. Nope. Nope, just a couple of weeks. So I've been preparing. I've been pre-recording all my videos, uh, making sure that you guys continue to get daily wrestling videos because, like, that's what I want to continue to do while I'm away. I don't plan on stopping our daily wrestling content. You will continue to get your daily wrestling content. It's just you won't get me being live, which, you know, I was already planning on taking a little bit of time off at Christmas anyways. Like, I was usually, or at least I usually take time off around, like, 
the 24th until I like I probably would have taken like less than a week off. I would have taken the 24th until probably uh, the 29th and be back on the 30th for Monday Night Raw. That's probably what I would have done, but it's not what I'm doing now. I will be off now. Granted, if for some reason, like, you know, the surgery goes really well and it's it's not supposed to be a crazy invasive surgery, right? done laparoscopically if that's even the right way to phrase that i'm not no doctor uh but it's done laparoscopically and it's a laparoscopic procedure there we go that's how i can put it it's a laparoscopic procedure and so it shouldn't be too invasive to me now i have already been through this before i had an inguinal hernia on my right side back in 2009 if i'm not mistaken like i was in grade eight when this happened and it's just from playing goalie in hockey, you know, it's, it's one of those risks. My knees are messed up and uh, my <laughs> it sounds funny to say, but my groin got destroyed <laughs> from playing goalie in hockey. And as a result, you know, I had to have that surgery back in 2009 and that surgery was uh, not done laparoscopically. It was done where they actually make an incision and, uh, you know, you're actually opened up that way. And so. I I'm very fortunate that I don't have to go through that process again because that whole process was like a goodness me I, like I was not feeling good for probably like three weeks at least before like it started to feel okay like I remember stupid enough like our family here oh my god like we had a trip planned to uh, Florida over March break and I got this procedure done like three weeks beforehand and we didn't cancel our trip down to Florida we said oh I'll be fine by then stupid 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 man holy like we I flew on a plane turbulence airport standing all that walk and we had to get me a freaking wheelchair to go through the airport because I could barely walk on my own oh man we went to a freaking water park and I actually went down the water slide uh, belly first that was like mm, I was dumb I was dumb we went on a roller coaster the thing was vibrating the entire time and I'm just sitting there like ow like it was it was horrible man it was absolutely awful I would I, I don't ever want to have to relive that again and so I'm a little nervous going into the surgery as a result because that memory of that pain that I went through and um being in the hospital for three days as a result and being we they had to give me morphine that was the level of uh of surgery that i had right like it was it was bad man i like i was i was out for a little while so this one is supposed to be a lot easier uh it, it's not going to keep me in the hospital for days on end it's going to literally be a day of procedure it takes two hours to get done one hour of recovery in the hospital and then i'm out of there so it's a much quicker procedure. Hopefully it won't be as invasive to my body and I won't be in as much pain. And then I can be back as soon as possible, right? So again, you're going to continue to get daily uploads here on the channel. You're going to continue to get your daily wrestling videos. Just no live streams until the end of the year uh, or at least the start of the new year, I should say. Now, I obviously can't give you a guaranteed time that I am back. My goal is to be back for the Friday Night Smackdown on the third that is my goal i would like to be back on the 30th if i could uh, <laughs> i don't think that's gonna happen though uh, that's a very quick turnaround time here with the surgery and so i'm just gonna make sure i take it easy i don't hurt myself any more than i already am and just get back to being healthy man because 2025 is all about getting on the right track being healthy and making sure both up here and my body are all doing good so that we can operate at the highest level possible I have lots of great things planned in 2025. Uh, I, I think I'm going to have one more podcast, though, that I'm going to pre-record here at some point. And I think we're going to talk about the year in WWE. So next conversations episode is going to be kind of like a year in review. So look forward to that. But thanks again, everybody, for listening and for giving this podcast the time of day. I really do appreciate it. I think we got something special growing here with conversations. I'm going to bring some guests on in the new year as well. I've already got a couple people that have said that they would like to be on. I just have to organize a time and a date to get them on. So Lots of good things happening. Thank you guys for your continued support. I really do appreciate you. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as well, okay? But yeah, also, talk about main event in the comments below because that's what we're talking about here. That's what this whole podcast was about. We're also going to get this on Spotify, okay? Ramble over. We're going to get it on Spotify. You guys will be able to listen on Spotify in the new year. But that's it for me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Appreciate all of you. Make sure you leave a like on this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Turn on those notifications. And keep coming back every single day 
because we upload wrestling videos every single day. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. And uh, see you in the new year, I guess.